Keeping History on Two Wheels is starting a new series, The Eight Most Abandoned Places in the State of Georgia. This week, we're going to start the series in Statesboro, Georgia. Located just on the outskirts of Statesboro is the Harville House. Even though it's on the list of both abandoned and haunted, it's actually neither. Come with us as we delve into the history of this once majestic home and family, and as we look forward towards its future. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload, and we do one each and every week. The history of this still active family farm starts in 1862, just prior to the home's construction. It begins when this man, Mr. Samuel Winkler Harville, purchased 754 acres just outside of Statesboro, Georgia, on what's now known as Harville Road. This past week, I had the pleasure of leaning up against a pickup truck and simply having a conversation with Mr. Tommy Harville. He and his two sons are just a few of the descendants of Samuel Harville. Tommy is an unassuming gentleman who one can tell right off the bat is a Georgia farmer through and through. The conversation I had with Tommy in person and his wife Donna on the phone left me with an understandably all too familiar feeling of nostalgia because of my ties to our family farm, which is no longer in the family and a respect for the love that they have for their farm and its dwellings, both new and old. The farm itself can be traced back well before Samuel Harville purchased the property in 1862, but it's the property's history since that purchase that is so very interesting. Samuel Harville, with no more than a nine-month formal education, was a self-made man without a doubt. Being born on December 17, 1826, and by the time he was 19, he was teaching school in Bryant County. He met and married his first wife, Nancy, and together they had seven children. Having started his family and establishing himself to be a student in both business and public service, the family relocated to Bullock County, which is Statesboro, Georgia, where once again, Samuel set out to make his mark. After moving to what's now the Harville Road area of Bullock County, he opened a general store which later housed Statesboro's very first post office. And the Sherwood Railway also had a stop on his property which became known as the Harville Stop. And if that wasn't enough, the stagecoach also made regular stops on his property. It wasn't long before the small area simply became known as Harville. In 1861, Samuel was one of two men from Bullock County to be selected to attend the cessation convention in Milledgeville, which was the, then the state capital of Georgia. Together, the two men voted for Georgia to secede from the Union, which gave the state a vote of 208 to 89. It was in 1862 that Samuel purchased the 754-acre farm, which is the property where we are today. At about the same time, the Civil War broke out and he enlisted into the 3rd Captain's Company of Bullet, where he rose to the rank of captain. After the war, he returned to his family and farm until his wife Nancy died in 1881. He then remained in the family cabin. Samuel then married Keziah Crosby, and together they had four more children and a set of stillborn twins. He also began to study the law and would draw up wills and legal papers. He served as district magistrate until his death in January 19, 1915. In 1894, 
Samuel's only living son, Keebler, took over the property. Keebler proceeded to build a one-story home, but as the family grew, so did the home. Ten years after the completion of the one-story home, the roof was raised and a second story was built. With this construction, a freshwater well on the back porch was placed, along with a storage room, both near the kitchen. With the addition of the second story, there was a total of 14 rooms. Also, while Keebler ran the farm, he was able to increase the acreage to right at 2,800 acres. And as it would turn out, Keebler was also as astute at farming and civil service as his father. Keebler was the first farmer in the Bullock County area to start commercially farming peanuts. Not only did he farm the peanuts, but he also taught and helped other local farmers do the same. Keebler passed away on May 12, 1949. The farm has been divided amongst the heirs over the generations. And in the 1970s, Tommy bought this portion out of his aunt's estate. And the spirit of entrepreneurship is still alive and well in the Harville family. Today, the house is in disrepair, but the plans are in the works for it to be restored to a presentable image. Tommy and Donna's son, Adam, built the pole barn for his wedding and recently also added a bride's house. Now the Harvilles rent out the location for weddings and special events. The house has sustained damage throughout time and vandalism. If you will notice, the wraparound porch is missing from the left side of the home. This is due to a nighttime vandalism when someone wrapped the two columns on that side of the house and pulled them down with a vehicle. The home has posted no trespassing and can be viewed and photographed from the road. If you would like to have a closer look at the family house, the family welcomes it. They would simply like for you to get in touch with them first. I will leave a link in the description to their website and email. Trust me, Miss Donna will talk your ear off as much as I will. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified whenever we do an upload. And we do one each and every week. And always remember, every trip starts with a step. And that step, well, it starts with you.